Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful website. It's a fresh and inspiring website and just makes you want to keep looking around. We love this theme at Websites Made Easy and have gone through hundreds of different themes to find you the best one out there that is perfect and does everything that you'll need and more. One which has proven to be successful online and also super quick and easy to set up and get going. Just look how beautiful it is, it speaks for itself. It's easy and it's going to save you thousands of dollars paying someone else to do it for you. And all it takes is some quick and easy steps to get this up and running and I'll be showing you every step of the way. Oh and it's also super cheap to get this up and running, it'll cost you less than dinner out, it's going to be the best investment you can make. And this is perfect for you whether you're a freelancer, a blogger, small or medium business, a photographer, an artist, an entrepreneur, whether you're just starting out or you're more experienced or maybe you're someone who is just keen to have their own professional responsive website. Well this is literally just copy and pasting, dragging and dropping what you want, where you want it to be on your site. It's really easy. And we'll be using a platform called WordPress which is used worldwide by some of the biggest companies and celebrities such as Forbes, Mashable, Jay-Z, eBay, Katy Perry, just to name a few. By the end of this video, you're going to be a pro at using WordPress and you will have this website as your very own, customised to how you want it with your own content. And don't worry if you haven't got any images or content yet, I'll help you out with that a little later. The look and feel of this website is inspired by multi-million dollar businesses such as Hollister, Android, Coca-Cola, Ford, Apple and as you can see these all have an engaging header with a big image that draws you in, a great call to action to get you to keep reading and to make that next move. So it's the same with your website, you'll have a full screen header with a beautiful image and a great call to action. These websites and many others use this method because it works. It's proven time and time again. Visitors are instantly engaged and they want more. They are far more likely to keep browsing and wanting more of your content, to read your blog posts, watch your videos, buy your products or services. It keeps your audience browsing and enjoying themselves. And I completely understand. You might feel a little overwhelmed or think you won't be able to do this, but you will because I've been there, trust me, and I'll be showing you every step to creating this. You'll get the hang of it quickly and you'll see it's actually easy. And if you ever need to pause the video, please do. Have a stretch or a breather and then continue with it. It's very quick to get this done. So, are you ready? Grab a drink and a snack, get comfortable and let's start creating your website. I've created a simple system that goes through setting up each section of the website. So in just seven easy steps, you'll have your website live on the internet. No gimmicks and no overwhelm, just seven simple actionable steps. So what will you be doing in the next seven steps and what can you expect to achieve? Let's take a look at that now. Step one is all about registering your website address, also known as your domain name. You'll learn what a domain name is, how to register one, and tips on the best practices when choosing one. It's just like buying a house and having an address so your friends and family can visit. Your website address is there so people can visit your website. We've also got a great little coupon code which will reduce the cost even more. Step 2 is installing WordPress to your domain name so you can then start creating your website. This is done in just a few clicks, it's quick and easy. In step three, you're gonna be amazed how your new website looks because we'll be installing a new theme which will transform the look and feel of your site. And again, it just takes a few clicks to do this. You'll get to know what a theme is and be introduced to your new theme and how to install and activate it. Then we'll take a sneak peek at how it looks.
In step four, you'll start creating the foundations of your website and get it online. You will learn the ins and outs of your new theme, how to find your way around and customize anything you want to make it your own. You're gonna have lots of fun in this step watching your website come to life. Step five, we'll be creating the different sections of your website, such as your about page and a contact page, so visitors can carry on the conversation and connect with you. This is a great way to grow your community. It grows trust in your brand and it expands people's awareness for what you're doing. In step six, we'll create a blog page and an optional extra page that I'll tell you all about very soon. Having a blog really gives you the opportunity to deeply connect and talk to your audience about the things that matter to them the most. It also builds and establishes the know, like and trust factor with them. And you can do this by giving your audience regular, fresh and relevant content which speaks to their interests and fulfills their wants and needs. And if you do this, you'll be well on your way to building a profitable online business. And again, don't worry if you haven't written before or you don't want to, I'll tell you some great resources that you can use to get this done for you. And in the final step, step seven, I'm gonna give you some of our favorite plugins to use on your new website. And these will be game changing to your success. If you don't know what a plugin is, you're in for a great surprise. But basically, they are little tools that enhance your website's capabilities. So for example, if a visitor was about to leave, one plugin can activate a pop-up which gets people to stay on your website or to submit their email address. Another one makes it easy for people to share your content to their social media, growing your audience even more. We've been researching and testing the best plugins to use, and soon you'll be using them too. My name's Theo, I'm the lead content creator here at Websites Made Easy, and I can't wait to get going with this. I'm excited to show you all the goodies coming up, so let's jump straight in and get started. The first step is to register a domain name and get hosting. As you know, a domain name is the name of your website. It's what people type in to visit your site. So for example, our domain is websitesmadeeasy.tv. Hosting is just somewhere for your website to live. And good news, both of these things are super cheap. We use HostGator to do both of these things and you can get your domain and hosting with them. We've used HostGator for years because they're fast, reliable, cheap, and they know WordPress. And we've even got a special coupon code you can use to reduce the cost. This will knock 50% off your hosting to get you up and running and saving even more. So you want to head to hostgator.com. And when you're there, you want to click on get started now. And you'll see three different options, the hatchling plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. Now the business plan is more expensive than we need. So I'm gonna focus on these other two. The baby plan is perfect if you're planning on using more than one domain name because it lets you host unlimited domains. The hatchling plan is slightly cheaper, but you can only have one domain with it. For this example, I'm just gonna use the hatchling plan. On this next page, we just need to fill out some information about the domain that we want and the hosting. So here is where you choose your domain. All you do is type in the name you're after and it will look up and see if it's available. If it is, you'll see a green tick. You can also change it from .com, .co.uk, .tv, or whatever you're looking for. I'd recommend staying with .com or something that relates to your business or where you live. You want to think about this carefully, and if you need to, just pause the video while you come up with that unique domain, and then press play when you're ready. For this website, I'm gonna have dream and create it and I'll choose .com. Perfect, it's available. The next step, if you scroll down, is to choose your hosting plan, a username and a security pin, and choose how long you want your plan. And you can choose between a month, two month subscription, or three years. I'm gonna do this for a year for this example, as it usually works out cheaper than doing it just month to month. Next, you want to fill out your payment information. Pause if you need to, and press play once you're ready. One thing to make sure is to use a good email address 
as HostGator will send you an email with your login details. So make sure it's a real email address that you can access. Next is additional services. And by default, HostGator adds on a few extra services that we don't need right now. So I'm gonna make sure that these are unselected and you can always get these later on if you need them. As I said, to help you get started with HostGator, I've got a special coupon code for you. This will knock 50% off your hosting to get you up and running and saving even more. You want to enter WordPress Hero and then validate it and it will bring the cost of your hosting right down. Now make sure you're happy with everything and that you've agreed with the terms and click on check out now. You're all done, congratulations. You're now the proud owner of your own domain name. Next is to install WordPress on your domain name. So you can then start building your website. That's what we're gonna do in step two. HostGator will have sent you some emails, so head there now and find these. Here it is, account info. Click that to open it and you'll see a few links. But the only one that you need is the control panel link, which is this one. So click on that to go to your cPanel. And the cPanel is where you can install WordPress to your domain name, as well as do lots more stuff with your website. So log in using the username and password, which you chose. And in case you can't remember, they're both in the email that you just received. At first, this might look a bit overwhelming. It did for me when I first saw it. There's lots of different things that you can do here. But all you need to do right now is find the software and services area. So scroll down, now find quick install and click on that and click on WordPress here. Then you need to select your domain name from this drop down and click on next. And then all you need to do is fill in a few things here, such as the email address of the person looking after your website. So if this is you, you can put in your email, then the name of that person as well and give your website a title and your name and last name. And click on install. And you're done. Once you've installed WordPress, you'll get a success message. And you'll see your username and password here. This is what you use to log in to your website. You'll also get an email with this in as well. When you're ready, click on this link which will take you to the back end of your website where you'll be able to log in. So you can edit and start creating it. There is a chance that it might say that your website's not ready or that it hasn't finished installing yet. And if this happens, you might need to set up the name servers. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So head over to HostGator and click on Customer Portal to log in. Log in using the username and password that you'll find in the email. Once logged in, you want to click on Domains and click on your domain and you'll see name servers here. So then click on change and you want to click on automatically point my domain to my hosting account and make sure to save name servers. So now enter your username and password to log in and we're in. You're now on your website's dashboard and you're the proud owner of an online website. Well done for sticking with this. It's a huge achievement and the real fun is about to begin. It's going to get even more fun and exciting as you start building out your beautiful new website, adding videos and images that really make your content stand out, call to actions to get your visitors to submit their email addresses and consume your content. I've got lots of exciting things to show you, so let's get started. This is your dashboard, which you'll be seeing a lot of, and you'll probably have some messages pop up, like these ones, which you can just close. And on the left is a toolbar with lots of options such as posts, pages, appearance, plugins, settings, and so on. And as you start creating your website, you'll notice more tools appearing here. You'll be using all of these to bring your website to life. All right, let's take a quick look at how our website looks right now, straight out of the box. To do this, head up here, right click, and open it up in a new tab. Here we go, this is how the website looks right now. It's like the foundations of a house, ready to be painted and decorated. We'll be installing a brand new website theme in a moment, which will transform how this looks in a matter of seconds. Okay, head back to your dashboard, either by clicking on the other tab or by hovering over here, 
and clicking on dashboard. So the first thing is to make sure that your website settings are correctly set up so everything functions and works well. So head to settings here on the left and we're going to quickly go through each of these different areas. So let's jump into the first one, which is general. Here you can set your website's site title and tagline, which is good for SEO. So use keywords that match what your website or brand is about. This helps Google rank your website and put it in front of relevant people searching for the same content. Below that is your WordPress address. You don't want to change this. And if you do, it will stop your website working. So don't touch these. Below that is your email address and make sure you've got a good email address here. You can also set the site language and time zone. This all looks good now, so make sure you save changes here if you've changed anything and do this whenever you change anything, make sure you save. And next, let's head to writing. Everything here looks good as well, so let's go to reading. Okay, front page displays is how you set up your website to either show your latest blog posts on the front page or a static page, like the one that we have here. We'll be coming back to this a bit later, so for now I'll leave this as it is and head to discussion. Here you want to look at email me whenever and anyone posts a comment and a comment is held for moderation. And before a comment appears, it has to be manually approved. This makes sure you're not getting just any comments on your website and whether you want an email every time someone comments. Down here, you've also got avatar and you'll see an option called gravatar. This enables you to have a little photo which people will recognize when you comment, reply, or join in the conversation with your audience. You've probably seen these before. For example, on our YouTube channel here, you can see everyone has their own photo. To set this up is easy. All you do is go to gravatar.com and you create a free account. It's really simple and takes just a minute. Then you can upload your photo and it'll show up on your website, just like James's photo here. So take a minute to do that and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, great. Now make sure you save changes and then click on media. Everything looks good here in media. So now click on permalinks. And here you can set how your website organizes its pages URL. And this is actually really important. You need to have it set to post name because as you can see, this is much easier to read and understand than the default setting. And this is not only easier for people to read and understand, but also search engines to see more clearly what your website is about so it will be ranked higher in search results and your content will be viewed by the right people who are actively looking for what your product or service is about. When you're done, click on save. Awesome, we're all done with those settings. Well done for hanging in there. I know going through settings can be a bit boring, but these are so important to get right and so many people don't realize this, but you've got the foundation set and now the real fun begins. You're gonna be transforming and starting to build your website. Let's go back to the dashboard. Now I want you to go to your toolbar on the left and find appearance and then click on themes. This page shows all the themes you have available and the one which is active right now is here. It's the 2017 theme, which is the default theme for new WordPress websites. See, it says active. That's the one that we just saw. So to add the new theme that we're going to use, all you do is click on add new here. And now here is where you can browse thousands of WordPress themes available and they're completely free. You can filter it by popular themes or featured, but we've done the work for you by going through many of these and we found the best one to use. It's called Sydney. We've worked with so many themes and this has got to be the easiest one we've ever used. And before I started working with James at Websites Made Easy, I thought building a website was hard, time consuming, confusing, and I didn't really know the first thing about it. When I started using Sydney, I was amazed at how fast and how easy it could be. What used to take months can be done in a single day. And I actually bought myself a theme to use before I knew about Sydney. And it was a great theme, it was fairly easy, but that theme cost me quite a bit of money and Sydney was even easier. 
and it's free. I move straight to the Sydney theme. Because all of our time is precious, we don't want to sit for weeks creating a website. I know I don't. So Sydney is definitely the theme to have. So all you do now is search for it here. Type in Sydney and it'll come up. And you can click on it for more info to find out a bit more about it. But we know it's awesome. So all you do is click install and then activate here. All done. Super easy. You can see the active theme is now the Sydney theme. So now let's go check out how our website looks again. You're going to be amazed at the difference. If you've already got the tab open from before, just go over to that and refresh the page. If not, hover over here again and open your website. Are you ready? Whoa, what a difference. Absolutely beautiful. I love how quick it is to do this. Check out this big header image and the call to action. These really catch your attention. I'm sure you agree this looks better. It's a professional, clean, fresh, fun website to browse around. Your visitors are going to love it. One last thing to do is head back to the dashboard and you should have a little message saying to install a couple of plugins which go with this theme. So let's do that now. And like I said, plugins are basically little tools which enhance the functionality of your site. So click on begin installing plugins and then click this box, click on the drop down here, select install and click on this button that says apply. Now click on this link that says return to required plugins installer. And now we have to activate these plugins. So like before, click on this box to select both of them, tap the drop down menu and select activate and click on apply. Great. It's going to be amazing once you've finished creating this and you've added all your own content to it. So are you ready for the next step? You're now going to start creating and editing this theme and make it your own. Let's go. The first thing we want to do is create our home page, which is going to be the very first page people land on when they visit your site. So to start, head to pages on the toolbar and click on all pages. This is where you'll find all of your website's pages. And at the moment we have a sample page. If you hover over that, you'll see some options like edit and trash. So let's delete this default page because we won't be using it. So click on trash. Let's now create a new page by clicking add new. And this is where you can edit your pages, add content, images, videos. So for the title of this new page, I'll type home here and I'll set the template here as front page. And you're done. Now you want to make sure you click on publish. A bit later we'll be adding our website sections to this page to build this home page like it looks here. For now let's create one more page and this time it's going to be our blog page. All you do is click on add new here. Again give your page a title, so blog, and you don't need to set a template for this page. So now click on publish. Now you need to set your website to show the correct pages when people visit. So go to appearance on the toolbar and then customize. This area lets you customize your theme settings and your website in general. So you can see you have options for the title, tagline and logo, header area, and options for your blog, the fonts are used in the website, the colors, as well as lots more. For now I want to scroll down and find static front page and click that to expand it. Now you'll see front page displays and at the moment it's set to your latest posts. We want it to display a static page. So click on that and you'll get a couple of drop downs. On the front page select the home page that you just created and for the posts page select your blog. And because you've made changes you want to make sure that you always click on save at the top here. When you make changes, you can see them as they happen because this is a live view of your website. Saying that, I would recommend having a separate page open to view your website so it's full screen and looks exactly like it would if someone was visiting. And this way you can keep checking the changes that you make even if you're not in this area. The best way of doing this is if you're using Safari, right click it and click on new private window. This opens a browser window that won't have any cached settings that might have been saved when you previously visited your website. 
so you'll be seeing the changes that are made. By the way, sometimes WordPress will have a coming soon page that displays by default, so you may not see the website right now. If this happens, you can easily turn it off by going to your dashboard and you should see a message saying your site is currently displaying a coming soon page. Once you're ready to launch your site, click here. So all you do is click here and it'll take away that coming soon page. Each page is made up of different sections and you can move these around, add or remove sections, change colors and much more. We'll get into all that fun in a moment, but first let's start by customizing your header area to how you want with your own images or video and your call to action. Like I showed you earlier, this is based on some of the most successful websites in the world by the biggest companies. This works incredibly well to pull people in, catch their attention, so they keep browsing and consuming your content. From the dashboard, go to Appearance and then Customize. Now find the header area and click that. And once there, click on Header Type. Make sure Full Screen Slider is selected here and for site header type, change that to no header. This makes it so other pages on your website don't show a big header at the top, so your viewers can get right into the information that they want. Now go back and click on header slider, and this is where you can add and remove each slider, and it gives you the options to change the speed between each one, and if you want to stop the text slider. I'm gonna change this to 6,000, which is six seconds between each slide. And I'm also going to stop the text slider. Next, scroll down and find the first slide options. You can change the image for the slide by removing it or changing it. And you can change the title and subtitle for that slide here. And if you haven't got any images yet, we have you covered. We've actually created a blog post all about this video. This is it right here, dream it, create it. And you'll see if you scroll down, we've got the image pack for you right here, which has every image that we've used in this video, as well as the audio MP3 download for you to listen to and a video transcript. So it's all here already done for you. So this makes it even easier for you to follow along with this video. So please make use of these. And to find this blog post is super easy. It's over on our blog and all you do is type in websites made easy tv forward slash blog forward slash dream dash it dash create dash it and this will take you straight to the blog post and as you can see you can download these directly from this blog post and you can pop them into your website straight away the dimensions have already been set up especially for you guys watching this video and following along with me creating this website so now let's get back to editing our slider all you do is click on change image and your media browser will appear, which contains any images you already have. You can upload your own images by clicking upload here and then select files, choose the image that I want to use and select it. Then click choose image. That looks amazing. See how easy that was? Sydney scales your images to the right size so it does it for you automatically, it's great. Now I want to change the slider text. So for the title, I'm gonna put dream it, create it. And I'm not gonna have a subtitle, so I'll remove that. Okay, I'm gonna change the other image now. So again, I'll just click on change image, upload and select the image that I want. And then change the title. Looking great, feel free to add more images if you want to. I'm gonna add a couple more and you can add up to five if you want. Once you've done that, scroll down to the call to action button. This is the button on the header here. You can add a URL that you want people to be taken to when they click the button. And this could be to another page of your website, for example, and you can change the text for the button here. I've already changed this to click to begin. So feel free to change this to whatever you feel is appropriate. The URL for this button can be anything and by default when someone clicks it, the page will scroll down to the section underneath. So that's pretty cool if you're gonna have a services section or call to action here. Later we'll be creating more pages so you can always add the URL later here. 
When you've finished, remember to click on Save and Publish. Let's have a look at how to customise this button so it takes someone to another page on your site. Come out of Customizer by clicking the cross and then go to Pages and All Pages. Choose any page as an example and click on Edit. The URL here is the page's address. This is what you would copy and paste into the button's URL. And this applies to any page on your site. It's as simple as that. OK, head back to the customizer by going to Appearance and Customize. The next area is Header Media, which is where you can upload a video or header image. This header image refers to the other pages on your site. I'm not going to use this because earlier I set headers for other pages to be off. But if you did want to use a header on your contact page or about page, then you can set the image here for that. It's the same with menu style. I'm not going to change anything here. But it's here in case you want to. And that's the beauty of this theme. You can play around and see how you like it, what works. It's so simple, you can just keep changing it. You won't break anything. For example, here on this website, the menu on the header is transparent. And as you scroll down, it follows along as you go down the website. And that's what sticky means. If you wanted it to stay at the top of the page, you choose static. So when you scroll down, it doesn't move. Have fun, be creative and see what you like. The next area you're going to is colors. And here I'll change the primary color, which is this one here. It's the button and a few other elements on the website. At the moment, it's a red. I'm going to use a nice fresh kind of pastel green color, which will go better with the images I used for the header. It'll make the button really pop. Feel free to experiment with the colors for your website and what goes with your images. You can use these colors here at the bottom or use this color wheel to choose from millions of different colors. Remember to keep your brand in mind and what your product or service and your message are about. If you want to use the same color as I'm using, you can easily type in the colors code. You can change this code here, delete that, and then type in hash 6FBCC6. Beautiful. When you've got the color that you want, remember to save and publish. And you're finished customizing these settings. So you can now go back to your dashboard, click on the cross, and it should take you there. In a moment, you'll start adding and customizing your website sections, which is going to be so fun. You'll see your beautiful website come together really quickly. The first time I did this, I was amazed how easy and quick it was and just the opportunities that you have to make the website your own. It looks amazing and it makes you feel like a pro. OK, so when I was showing you the head area, I mentioned that you can have a logo at the top. Well, in case you don't have a logo, I wanted to show you a great little resource that we found that lets you create your own logo in just minutes, completely free. It's called LogoMaker.com. It's a super simple little tool which is meant to give you a quick logo to use in case you can't get one done for you. It's free and it couldn't be easier to use. So go to logomaker.com and that's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R.com. This whole area here is where you can create your logo using a toolbar on the left with shapes, a color wheel and so on. And at the top you can search from thousands of elements to use. For example, I'll do a quick search and press enter and I get literally hundreds of different images that I can look through. Some of these are already done and ready for you to use. I'm going to go with something fun just for this example. So all you do is double click on the one that you like and it's then placed in your work area. You can change colors using the color wheel here as well as add other shapes and images to create something unique. As I said, this is used as a quick fix if you really can't get a logo created for you. It's a simple and quick solution. You need to make it small enough so it fits in the header and you can do that by clicking and dragging these handles to make your logo smaller. And you want it to be around 50 pixels by 50 pixels. So then you just click on save at the top here, wait for it to download and you'll now see two options. One where you can download your logo for free and you need to give credit to the author somewhere on your website or you can pay to download it and not have to give credit. This is entirely up to you. For now, I'm going to go with the free option and then it downloads. That's a free resource for you to use if you don't have a logo 
and you want to get one done quickly and easily. If you want a custom logo created for you by a professional that can be geared more towards your brand, I recommend looking at websites like Upwork.com or People Per Hour. These are great resources to not only get your logo created for you, but all kinds of other work. Yes, it'll be more expensive, but how much do you value your business and what you're doing? It's well worth spending a little money on a professional logo to represent your business or service. So let's now upload our logo. Go back to WordPress and the dashboard and head to Appearance and Customize and then find Site Title, Tagline and Logo. Then select Image, Upload, select Files and choose the image that you just downloaded and you'll see the logo appears right there. It's replaced the site title and tagline. Now you know how to use a logo. For this website, I'm not going to use a logo, so I'm going to remove it. As you can see, when I remove it, the site title and tagline reappear there. But what if you didn't want the site title and tagline either? There isn't anything in settings to actually remove that. But don't worry, I've got a quick way to do it. This is only going to take you a minute or two to do. It's really easy. So save any changes that you've made and then go back to your dashboard by clicking the cross. Now we're going to install a nifty little plugin which allows us to use code called CSS to completely customize our website. It's like a VIP or access all areas to the look and feel of your site. And don't worry if you've never heard of CSS or used it before, I'll show you exactly what to do. Just follow along with me. First, let's head to plugins on the toolbar and then add new. And now search for simple custom CSS. Here it is. Now click on install, then activate. While you're installing plugins, let's quickly find and install another plugin called Site Origin Widgets Bundle, which goes along with the Sydney theme and lets you use even more tools to create a website. So type that in making sure site origin is one word, otherwise it won't actually show up. Here it is, install it and activate. Awesome, we'll be using some of these tools soon. For now, we have the custom CSS plugin that we just installed and you can find it on your toolbar here. So hover over that and select add custom CSS. Now you should see this page and it probably looks a little bit confusing and a bit weird and I felt exactly the same way when I saw this for the first time. But I'll show you exactly what to do, and it's actually pretty simple. This area is where you type in the CSS code, which will customize anything that you want on your website. So you can ignore all of this writing here and just put your cursor below it at line number 12. And now you want to type in the following exactly as I do it. So here we go, you ready? Full stop site dash title comma and then press enter full stop site dash description open bracket press enter again text dash indent colon space dash nine 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 px semicolon press enter again and closed bracket when you've done it it should look like that Make sure you've got that written correctly with the right brackets, spaces and everything just like I've done it. And look out you haven't done anything where there shouldn't be. It needs to look identical. When you're done, click on publish at the top here. You can also give this a title so you remember what this code is for. So what this is going to do is hide the site title and tagline from your website, which is going to create a much cleaner, nicer looking header. You don't want a website with loads of stuff everywhere and people can get easily lost, frustrated and may just leave. So it's way better to keep things simple. OK, you've just done your header area. Now let's jump into step five and start creating the different sections of the home page and allow visitors to follow you on any social media platforms that you use. On the website, the area we'll be creating first is the R services section, which is here just below the header. Most people get this bit really wrong and they start talking all about themselves or maybe how great they are, 
but this section is your opportunity to talk about how you can really benefit your audience. So this comes down to how you speak to the desires, the wants and needs of your audience. How do you solve their pain points? This is what you should be adding here because your audience is interested in how you could ultimately help them get from A to B. So having that here just below your header is the ideal opportunity to attract people to your brand, products and service. The way this works is you create each service that you want to be displayed here in the services area of the toolbar, which is here. And actually this applies to your client section as well and a few others, but we'll come to that a bit later. If we go to services now, click on add new. And all you do is add a title for the service here. So I'll type mine in and then the description that you want in this area. Now when you're ready, scroll down here and this lets you use an icon with your service using an ID. All you do is click here to go to the icons website and you'll see a page with hundreds of different icons that you can choose from. Depending on the products or service that you're offering, you have a wide choice of different themes and icons. When you've chosen one, you need to copy the code next to it here and then head back to your WordPress site and paste that code in here. Notice that you can also add a link to the service by adding a URL here. So when someone clicks the service, this could take them to another page. Now go to the categories area on the right and we're going to create one category for all of our services. And this is going to help us when we add the services section to the website in a moment. All you do is click on add a new category, give it a name, I'll just name mine services and press enter. Now that category is added to the list here. Make sure the category is selected and all you do now is click on publish. I'm now going to create two more services for this section. You just click here to add a new section. Again, give it a title, description, choose an icon, make sure the category we just created is selected and publish it. Do the same, create the rest of your services. I recommend three as this looks best for this section and I'll see you in a moment. Great, now you should have your services created. Head to services and all services and you should see this page. I want you to make sure that each one of these that you created has the same category. If one doesn't, you can easily change this by just clicking on quick edit and having a look here at the category and then changing it to the right one if you need to. All right, you are doing fantastic. Now let's go and look at our homepage and start creating the different sections. And we'll start by adding our services section. So head to pages and all pages and then find home and click on edit. This is your home page, and this is where you'll be adding all the sections to your website using the page builder plugin that came with Sydney. And you want to make sure that you're in that by clicking on page builder here. This is the finished website and the our services section is here with the call to action below it. So here in the page builder, you can see it's the same. The sections are on top of each other, just like it looks on the website. And if I move one of these sections up or down and update the page, as you can see, the section has moved. Now I'm going to show you the process that we used to create this exact website. And once you know how to do this, you can create anything that you want. It's a beautiful layout and it has everything that you need. Plus it's simple to do and super effective in growing your online business and building loyal customers who love your service or product. Let's start creating the home page. To create a new section, you'd first add a row by clicking here, and rows can be split into multiple areas by clicking here, which enables you to have more than one widget or element inside. This is really powerful and flexible, meaning you can create all kinds of website pages and sections that you can think of. Let's now start adding the sections that make up the homepage. We'll start with our services. So remember I said sections are made up of widgets inside rows. So first thing is to add a row. So do that now and make this a one column row and click on insert. And that's our row in place. 
Now we want to add the services widget. So click on add widget. And this page has all kinds of widgets that you can use, but we're looking for the services widget. Here it is, it's called services type A. So click to add that in. Now you've got your first section. Notice if you hover over the row or widget, you get options to edit, duplicate or delete. The spanner here is only to edit the row itself. You need to hover over the widget to edit that. So hover over the widget and click edit. Here you want to enter a title, so I'll put our services. And if you want to have a button, you can enter the text for it here and a URL to another page to send people to. Here you want to write the category that you created for your services. This will make sure all the services you created earlier will show up in this section. Then click done and then update. You've just created your first section, well done. It's basically the same process going forward for every section on your website. So let's jump into the next one, which is your call to action. If you're not familiar with what a call to action is, a call to action is also known as a CTA and is exactly what it means. You're asking someone to take an action somehow, usually something for free, and it could be in exchange for their email address or anything that you choose. The action you want people to take could be anything. Download an ebook, sign up for a webinar, get a coupon, attend an event, and so on. It has to be something that is relevant and gives huge value to your audience, so they can't resist it and have to have it. Call to actions are the best ways to collect email addresses, grow your following, get people interested in your product or service, and create momentum. I understand this is something you need to think about, so let's create this section and you can always come and edit it once you've figured out what you want your call to action to be about. So back to the page builder. Let's create the section for our call to action. Again, you need to add a row, so click that and make it one column and insert that. Then add a widget and you're looking for the Sydney call to action widget, which is here. Then edit the widget. You don't need a title and you enter your call to action here, the button's title here, as well as a link which the button will take people to once they click it. And we'll be creating the page which people will be taken to later, so I'll leave this for now. Next you want to make sure to have this ticked, so the text is in line with the button. And then click on done and you're finished. Let's now check out how your website looks with your two new sections. Here is the beautiful header, scroll down, and here is the R services, and below that, the call to action. At the moment, they're the same color, so they look like one big section, but we'll be changing that in a moment. It's really coming along. I hope you're loving the look of your site as much as I am. It's exciting seeing it come together, and how quick is it to do this? You're going to be making this call to action more compelling and the font stand out. I'm gonna show you a great little trick to transform this section. You're going to add an image to it, which moves as someone scrolls down. You're gonna love it. So head back to your homepage and find the call to action widget. You want to make sure to add the image to the row, not to the widget. So you need to click on edit row, and once there, click on design and find background image. Then select image, click on upload image, and choose the image that you want to use. Select it and then click on done. If you want, you can also choose to disable the color overlay, which makes the image darker and then click done again. Now let's change the color of the call to action text. So it stands out from our background image. You just want to click on edit for the widget, click on design, and you want to change all of these colors here and change those to whatever color you want. I'm gonna use a white so it stands out. And then click done and then update. Let's check out the website. So refresh the page again, scroll down, there's the services and there's your call to action. But as you can see, it isn't exactly looking right just yet. So from here, click on edit page at the top and it'll take you here. Now edit the row, click on layout, scroll down and find row layout 
and change that to full width. Also up here is top bottom padding, which I'll explain a bit more in a moment, but basically it's the space in between each of your sections. So this row is 100 by default. So you want to change this to 25. So I'm making it smaller. Now update and check out how it looks. That looks so good with the image and white text. And you see, as I scroll up or down, the image moves. This is called a parallax effect and it looks great, doesn't it? It adds so much to your website. It brings it to life. As I said, in between each section, there's space and we call that padding. It's important to get the padding right in between sections so they all fit together nicely in your website. You should check to see when adding your sections that the space in between each one looks good. But we'll go through this as we add them. Are you ready for the next section? Let's jump into the R work or portfolio section. So make sure you're in the page builder and you should be familiar with how it works now. You need to add a one column row. Then add your widget inside that row. The widget you're looking for is called portfolio. This section is ideal to show off more about your business or service. So you could be a photographer who wants to show their latest work or a blogger, an entrepreneur or business owner. Whoever you are, you can use this section to your advantage. It's an eye catching and engaging bit of your website that your visitors will love and is a great way to get content in front of them. Each image in this section is a project and you might have noticed we have projects in the toolbar here. You'll also create some more categories to keep projects in, which means you can create different projects based on individual interests. We then link the projects to the widget, which then displays them in this nice section. And these are the categories here. So when someone clicks on the different categories, the images change depending on which category they're in. And each project is its own page. So you could have more information about the image. If you're a photographer, maybe the story of how you captured it or the location. Let's get going. We'll start by creating the projects or images for the widget. Find projects in the toolbar and click on add new. All you do is add a title and then the image that you want to use. In the featured image down here, you can use an image that you already have or upload one. I'm going to upload one. Here it is. And it gets placed in here. If you wanted the image to link to another page, you can add that in here. Or, as I said, it will have its own page, which you would just add the content for in this area. Then add the category that you want that image to be in. And I'm going to create a few new categories to keep these in. And you might want to do the same because all your work might not be in the same category. And this will help your viewers find your other work by just clicking on these categories. Perfect. So when you're done, you just click on publish. All right, let's do the next one. Go to projects and all projects. There's your first portfolio image. Now click on add new to create the second project. So again, we need to add a title, then scroll down and add your image by clicking on featured image and then choosing the image that you want to use. And you want to be sure your images are the same size so they fit together in the widget. Otherwise you'll get images that are bigger or smaller and it looks cluttered and untidy, you definitely don't want that. These images are all 1280 by 720 pixels. And to do this, you can click on edit image here, and this gives you the option to change the size of the image using this little editor. I'm gonna use the same categories as before for this image. And there you go. Always remember to publish when you're done. I'm going to create the rest of the projects and categories. 10 is good so they fit in the widget and they go across the entire page, but add in as many as you'd like. So do the same and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, you should have a few projects now and some relevant categories. All you do is head to the portfolio widget and add in the category names. So let's do that now. You want to write the categories that you created in here. Write them in one by one entering a comma after each one. So they look like this. Write in a title if you want to and choose the number of projects to show. If you want to show them all, just leave it as dash one. Lastly, enter in what you want the button to say. I'll just leave this as it is and click done. Now click on the spanner for the row and edit that. 
and then change the row layout to full width stretched. As you can see, I haven't used any padding in this section. Keep in mind, going forward, the padding measurements I'm using work great for me, but technology can sometimes be annoying, so you might find it's a little different on your end. If it looks different, just play around with it until the sections look right for your content. Now click done and then update. Okay, we're finished with that section and I can't wait to have a look. But first, let's get the next section done and you can take a look at how your beautiful website is coming along. Next up is the testimonial section, a great little area to show reviews from customers who have enjoyed your product or service. This is another great way to grow the know, like and trust factor with your audience. If someone sees others have enjoyed what you're offering already, they are much more likely to buy from you. They'll know it's genuine and want to see what all the fuss is about. The same as the portfolio widget and services widget. All you do is add new testimonials in the toolbar here. Then all you do is add in a name for the person, their testimonial and an image. And you can also add the person's company name or their role here. Click publish and you're done. So pause the video and create a few testimonials to go with this widget and play again when you're ready. Great, you should have some testimonials. So now all you need to do is create the testimonial section. So go to pages and all pages, then home and edit, and now create another row, and then add in the testimonials widget. Now click edit for the widget, add a title, and if you want to show all of your testimonials, write dash one here, and you can change how long each one shows up for by changing the value here, which is in milliseconds. I'll change this to 6000, which is six seconds. Now I'll click on the spanner to edit the row, click design and scroll down. And you can add a background image here if you'd like. Instead of a white background, it would show an image, which looks pretty good. It's up to you though. Now go to layout, put 50 for the top bottom padding and 30 for the bottom margin. And make sure the row layout is set to full width stretched. If you used a background image, you need to change the color of the text for the section. Scroll down and find these colors, and you should change these to a white, so they all look good with the new background image. Now click done and update. Great, you're done. Let's now check out how your website is looking. Here's the beautiful header, services section, and well, this is coming along well. Look how great this is all looking and our testimonials with the background image. Fantastic, I hope you're loving how this is looking. It's coming along nicely. See how the image scrolls when you move up or down? It's engaging and eye-catching. Your visitors are gonna love this. Let's keep going and get the next section created. You're now going to create your blog widget, which is gonna be a great little place for people to see your latest blog posts right on your homepage. Right now it won't show anything until you add in some blog posts, which we'll be doing in a moment, but for now, let's add the section. So you should be a pro at this by now. First, add in a row, and then add the latest news widget. Let's edit the row, and add 70 for the top bottom padding. And that's all for now. We'll come back to this a little later when we've created some posts for this section to show. Remember to update the page once you're done. Okay, the next section I want to show you is a nice little area to have a video. And this could be a video about you, your products or services, or anything you're offering. It's a great way to inspire your visitors and motivate them. Using video is powerful and adds another layer and gives your website more depth. It's easy too. In a page builder, add a row, and then you want to add a widget, and you're looking for the Sydney video widget. Now all you do is find your video on YouTube or Vimeo. And this is a quick video I created and I've uploaded it to my YouTube. Now you just need to copy the URL here and then edit the widget and paste that in here. And then update. Let's see how that's looking. Great, you can see it's embedded the video here but the background is just white. I want to make this much nicer with an image. So head to the row and click on edit, then design, find background image and click on select image. 
then find the image you want to use or upload one and then go to layout and find row layout and set it to full width. Then update and let's have a look. That is much better. Doesn't that look great? Your visitors can now click and play the video right from your homepage. It's super inspiring and it's a great way to give them more information about you, your service or products. Okay, we're on a roll. The next section is a nice little area to show the clients you've worked with. This is great to build trust and expertise with your audience and build your know, like and trust factor further. If they see you've got great feedback or have worked with brands or companies, they're much more likely to buy from you because they'll have confidence and trust you more. This section is just like the R services section. You create a client in the client's toolbar on the left here. So go there now and click on add new. All you have to do is give this client a title, which would probably be the client name. And then you change the featured image here to an image of your client's logo or business name. You also have the option to add a link here if you want to, to make the logo or image clickable. Then click on publish. It's that easy. So do this for any clients that you want and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, great. Now you need to make sure the widget is set up properly. So let's go to pages and all pages, find home and click on edit. Create a row and add the client widget to that row. Now click the spanner for the row, then layout and change the padding there to 25 and check that it says full width for the row layout. You don't need to change anything else here. It'll automatically bring your clients in. So you've now added most of the sections to your homepage. You've just got to add your social media buttons and we'll do this by adding them to our footer, which is at the bottom of the page. Like you can see here, We'll also be adding a little video and some useful contact info. To do this, we'll head to Appearance and Widgets. This is where you can find available widgets to use in your footer and sidebar areas. As you can see, you've got three footer areas and one sidebar area. And in each one, we'll be adding different widgets. So let's start with footer one. You want to add the video here. So click footer one to expand it and then find the widget that you want to use on the left. Here it is, and drag it into the footer area. There you go, easy as that. And then as you know, all you need to do is add your video URL in. To do that, click on add video, and click insert from URL. Then paste the video's URL here. This is a great video all about Logo Maker, which you can find on our blog. Then click on add to widget, and then save. That's your first footer area done. On to footer two. This one is going to have a text widget so we can write in a brief description. So find the text widget, which is right at the bottom again, next to the video widget. Then drag that into the footer. And now you want to write a brief description of your goals or whatever you'd like. Then again, make sure to save. Next is footer three. And in this one, we'll add two widgets. As you can see, we have our contact info and our social media buttons below that. So first find the Sydney contact info widget. Here it is. And add it in. For the next widget, the site origin social media buttons, you need to find the little plugin you installed earlier, which gave you those extra widgets. Do you remember? If you go to plugins, you'll see site origin widgets. Click that. And all you want to do is activate all of these extra widgets. They're all super useful. So it's good to have all of these to use. Now you should have your site origin social media buttons widget. So just drag that into footer three. Let's start with the contact info widget and add in your information in the relevant boxes. The email address will be made clickable to make it even easier for people to get in contact with you. Perfect. For the social media buttons, you can add the networks that you use by selecting them from the drop down here and adding in the URL of your Facebook page, Twitter page, or whatever you're using. This is great because you can customize these buttons to how you want. We've gone with a flat minimalistic icon, 
by choosing flat in the button theme, padding as low and the size as normal. Play around and see what works for you, then remember to save. And you're all done with your footer areas. Now let's look at the sidebar and these widgets will show up here on your website when your visitor's looking at a blog post. I'm going to keep this really simple and I'm just going to keep the recent posts and the categories. I'm going to remove everything else. And to remove things you just click them and click on delete. Let's take a look at the finished homepage. This looks amazing, I'm really pleased with it, I hope you are too. Here is the footer we just created with our social media buttons, video and contact info. This is great. You should be super proud. Well done, you're doing amazing. And in a moment, we'll be jumping into the next step. Just before that, let's get your menu up and running at the top of your website so your visitors have a way to explore your other pages and content. Let's go. So you want to go to Appearance and Menus. Now you want to click on Create New Menu. Give your new menu a name and click Create Menu. Now you want to add any pages that you want into your menu and here they are on the left. So now you select which ones you want and click on Add to Menu. You can then click each one and edit them and you can also move them around to customise the layout of your menu. Then all you do is save menu. Easy. So do this now. Set up your menu with the pages that you have right now. And you can always add the other pages a bit later when you create them. Now let's add the new menu to your website. So head to appearance and customise. And you'll find menus on the left. Then menu locations and set your new menu as your primary menu. This will add the menu to the top of the website as you can see, making it easy for people to get around. By the way, I've added home so people can easily get back to this home page from any other page on the website. If you have a logo or you've chosen to keep your site title and tagline, this works the same way. Okay, I'm super excited about this next step because this is where you're going to be creating your contact page, about page, your blog posts and an exciting extra page which is going to make all the difference to increasing your subscribers and traffic and growing your business. Okay, let's get going. First, head to pages and add new. Let's create the about us page. All you have to do is give the page a title, so about us, and then change the page template to front page and click on publish. It's that easy. You've already got your blog page created and your website already knows to publish your posts to your blog page. So now head to appearance and menus to add the new about us page to your menu. You want to select it and add it in and then rearrange it to where you want it to be and then save. If you have a look at your website now, the menu displays your pages and you can click to go to that page. Right now they're not showing anything as we haven't created any sections yet. The blog page is set up and working, it takes you to the blog page, but unless you have posts, it won't be showing anything right now. So the next step with this is to create some blog posts. So let's head to posts and I'll show you exactly how to create a new post for your blog, which remember will also show up on your blog section on your homepage. This is gonna look great, so let's jump straight in. This is the page to create any type of blog post you want. You'll see you've got all these tools to use to create your post here. And if you click this button, the toolbar expands, which gives you extra tools to play around with. You can add different sized headings, links, bullet points. You can add media such as photos as well as videos, customized text. So use all of these to create your post and make it engaging for your viewers. The main area here is where you add all your content. You've also got some options to the sides and you've got different formats here such as image formats, video, links. I just stick to the standard format for now though as this works great. You've also got featured image which is the image that shows up above the post like these here. 
So you want to add your blog post title here. And for the main content, I've already got some created. So I'm gonna paste that in here. If you want to pause while you create your post, go ahead and play again when you're ready. You want to make sure to create some categories for your different posts as this makes it much easier for your visitors to find all your other posts related to the one they're reading. They are much more likely to find and look at your other content if they can easily click on a relevant category that they're interested in. You can also use tags with your posts. This is another way for people to find your content and create interest in what you're doing. And the last thing to do is add a featured image to your blog post. Like I said, this is what you see above the post here, making it eye-catching and much more interesting to look at. So click on featured image and either choose one you've already got or upload an image and select it. Then all you do is click on publish and you're all set. Again, just pause the video while you create your post if you need to and press play when you're ready. By the way, if you haven't got any of your own images, we've got a great little post which tells you some amazing resources to get 100% free images to use in your posts. You can find it on our blog at websitesmadeeasy.tv forward slash blog. And it's in our popular blog posts here, top 31 places to find free images. It's great. I definitely encourage you to go check it out. You'll find lots of images that you can use with your blog posts. Fantastic, you've just created your first blog post. Congratulations. You're doing amazing getting this all set up and well on your way to having a very successful website. This looks great. Right now, this is styled in a classic way, which means the blog posts are laid out like this and they'll have big images with a glimpse of the blog post below. You can choose another way, which I personally prefer, and I'll show you that now. If you go to appearance and then customize, and find the blog options section, you can change how your posts look. So if I change the styling to masonry, save and publish, and then refresh the website, the posts will be smaller and it's easier to see them. It's up to you how you want it to look. I'll keep it like this with masonry as I like this look. I've just noticed that I've still got the default post from when WordPress was installed. So I'm gonna delete that by going to dashboard, posts and all posts. Click this default post and move to trash. Go back to appearance and customize and I'm gonna change one other thing. Go to blog options and find the excerpt length. I'll change this to about 35. This will change the amount of the blog post you see underneath the image. Save and publish. I'm now going to add two more posts just to show you how they all look together. So feel free to do the same or do this after watching the video. Okay, the posts are done and I've now got three blog posts. So if I go to the website and refresh it, my blog posts come up and they've been aligned together with their images and a glimpse of the post with the date you wrote them and so on. By the way, Having a blog doesn't need to be complicated. You just create your posts and they automatically get added onto your blog page for your audience to enjoy. It's simple. It also doesn't need to be time consuming and keeping an active blog is the best way to grow your presence. Your audience grow trust in your brand and get visitors to keep coming back and checking out what new posts that you've got. You'll be seen as a leader in your niche. So you want to be sure to regularly create new posts. Maybe start with one a week and go from there. Just be sure to keep it consistent. Choose a day which works for you and try to publish a post on that day so your subscribers know they can look forward to a fresh new blog post each week. Okay, let's create the contact us page next. I'm also gonna quickly create another page called WTC system. This is the extra page that I mentioned earlier and you can name it anything you want. I'm naming it WTC system, and it's going to be another way to get your product or services in front of your visitors, and a perfect way to collect email addresses. We'll talk more about that soon, but it's a game changer, so don't miss it. So from pages, click on add new, give it a title, so this time I'll write contact, and change the template to front page, and click on publish. 
Again, I'll click on Add New, give the page a title, WTC System. I'll give it the same template, front page, and I'll publish it. So I'm creating this page to give you an example of what you could do to get a product in front of your audience. It really is an effective and simple way to grow your business. And so many people don't do this and then wonder why their business isn't growing. We've got you covered and I'll show you how to do this step by step. And in case you don't know what a lead magnet is, a lead magnet, which is also known as your irresistible offer, is based on tapping into the wants and needs of your customers, giving them a solution to their problem. They're looking around your website for a reason. They have something they want to solve. So what's your market and what are you trying to achieve? What help are you giving people? Think about what kind of problems your audience are facing, which your product or service can help to solve and create a lead magnet, which they'll have to have and is gonna help them achieve their goals. This is to attract them to download your lead magnet in return for their email address, which you use to always have a way to be in contact with them. Update them with new services or products. So instead of someone just coming to your website, looking around and then leaving and maybe never coming back, you've always got a way to get your product or service in front of them again. And a lead magnet can be anything. You might want to give away a free PDF on eating healthy, a free report, video series, a guide to grooming your dog, free book, or even a free chapter from a book. It really depends on what you do and what you're selling. As long as you're hitting a pain point and giving people a solution to help fix that, you'll make it easy for people to say yes to wanting to download your lead magnet and growing your email list. Great, you've got all your pages created. So now let's start adding the sections to your About Us page. It's the same as we did with the home page, using rows and widgets to create the sections for the page. So find your About Us page and click Edit underneath it. You want to make sure you're in the Page Builder by clicking the tab here. If we look at the completed website and the About Us page, you can see it has a headline About Us, text underneath that, and a nice little video on the right. You've got your beautiful looking call to action on this page as well, and your social media buttons at the bottom again in the footer. So back in the page builder, we'll start creating this page using the rows and widgets just like before. For the headline, you'll add a row, and you want to make this a two column row, and then add a couple of widgets. You should have these widgets activated from earlier, but if not, head to plugins and site origin widgets. And you can activate all the widgets here that aren't active yet. Okay, perfect. So we're looking for the site origin editor widget, which is kind of like the page editor you used for your blog posts. Basically a text editor with some nifty tools. So add that widget in the left column, then find the video widget and add that in the right column. So first edit the widget on the left and write your title here. This will give the page a nice headline and you'll write your description here. So it's underneath the title. You want to give your visitor enough information about you and what you do, your mission, your goals, why you do what you do, but don't go on and on about how great you are. A lot of people do that and this isn't the right way to go as it'll put people off. You want to come across helpful. They need to believe you can help them find what they're looking for. To add the video, you want to edit the video widget on the right. And just like we did before, click on add video, insert from URL and paste your video's address here. Click add to widget and it gets embedded automatically on your page. Now edit the video again and click layout and put 25 for the top padding and 20 for the left padding and the rest should be at zero. When you've done that, click done. Next is a call to action. So add a row and find the call to action widget. Here it is. Just like you did before, fill this out with your call to action button text and link that you want to use. And you want to edit the row and put 25 for the top bottom padding and make it full width. Also make sure to add the background image to the row and make sure your font is white so it stands out against the image. And you're all done with your about page. How quick was that? Make sure that you publish it and let's check it out.
Very nice. I love how clean this looks. And the video is placed right there, ready to be played. Our call to action is beneath here. So this is an inspiring page for anyone viewing it. And then they can easily get started by clicking your call to action. Use this page as an opportunity to make your story interesting. Enable people to understand how you know what you know and what makes you an expert on the topic. Why should they be interested in what you have to offer? How will their life be better because of it? And where can they go from here? So this is looking great. Amazing work. Well done. Remember, you may need to add this new page to your menu at the top if you haven't done already. And remember, you can do that in appearance and menu. Okay, let's now do our contact page. So you've got a headline and text underneath with a clean looking, easy to understand contact form on the right. And the contact form you'll be using is a built in plugin that comes with the theme. Super easy and we can get this set up in one row using two widgets. So let's get going. Head to your contact page and start by adding a row and you'll need it to be two columns. And then add a widget and find the site origin contact form. Add that to the right column and then find the site origin editor and add that to the left column. For the editor, you can write your title here and add in your contact information just like this. You can also make these clickable like we did before. Just highlight any text and click this icon. And for your email, make sure to put mail to colon before your email address. If you want to use social media links, just write in Facebook or anything you want to use. Make it a link by highlighting it and write in your page's URL. For the contact form on the right, click edit on the widget and here you can select which fields you want to use. So your name, your email, subject and message. You can rearrange these as well as look at the settings where you can write the email that you want people's messages to be sent to and the default from email. You can choose to use a default subject and also a success message here, which will show up when someone submits a message. You might want to use a spam protection. So this means before someone can send a message, they have to fill something out like a word or number. And that's here if you want to use that. But what I like is the design and you can edit this here. You can change the background color, padding, border color, the width and so on. This gives you so much flexibility to choose exactly how you want your form to look in line with your brand. Feel free to copy these settings to get the same look as ours. So once you're done with those, click on update and let's go check out our new contact page. This is looking great and lets your visitors easily get in contact with you. Don't forget to add this new page to your menu if you haven't already. Okay, so this is where the optional page comes in that I mentioned earlier. And if you've got a product or service you're trying to get people to spend their money on, or if you're trying to build your email list, then this page is perfect for you. I've named mine WTC System, and I'm gonna use this page to introduce our unique WTC system here at Websites Made Easy and offer a free piece of value to my visitors in exchange for their email address. It's full of goodies that takes your website to the next level. And this is actually a real system that we've created here at Websites Made Easy. So if you are interested, go and check it out. It's an amazing system, unique to us, that I highly recommend. Let's create this page now so I can tell you how to get going with this. Start by adding a row. Then add the editor widget. Add another row and then add the text widget to that one. Start with the first row and the editor. In the rows settings, you want to put 10 for the top bottom padding. Okay, and now edit the widget and you can write your content in here. I've got some already created, so I'll paste that in here. I want this to be centered. So what I do is highlight all of this and then I would click the align center button here. Now I want the image to be just under this text. So I would put the cursor here and press enter, align it to the center again. And all I do now is click on add media and select the image that I want. And you can resize it using these handles until you've got it just right. Great. 
There we go. Okay, so onto the next row. We'll edit the widget and you can get your contact form in here, which will let you grow your email list. But this will need to be connected to a service called MailChimp. MailChimp is a free service which people use all over the world from small e-commerce shops to large multi-million dollar businesses. It's a fantastic service. This video isn't long enough to explain how to set this up properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and add mine in. And after this video, we will link the MailChimp video for you to follow along with. And you can go ahead and set this up. I definitely recommend doing this. It will make all the difference to your success. This is like the last puzzle piece to creating your beautiful website. So I've created a simple contact form linked to a list, just like you will in the next video. Now you would head back to your WordPress and the text widget. And all you do is paste this code in here. This will put your form on the page underneath the image and content that you created. Now you click done and you update. Okay, this is looking so good. Simple, straightforward, and full of value for your visitors. And the aim is they will be attracted to this free piece of value which is aimed at their wants and needs. They'll submit their email address and I can always be in contact with them with my products and services. This is just the tip of MailChimp and there's so much more you can do with it. We've got videos covering everything you can do with MailChimp. So be sure to have a look at our blog and YouTube channel to learn more and go more in depth with MailChimp. It really is something you want to effectively use to grow your business with your WordPress website. Okay, you are basically done with your new website. It's looking so great with the beautiful homepage, images, and your different pages. It's super inspiring and it makes people want to keep looking around and get to know you and what you're offering. This reminds me, you need to link this new page to the call to action sections that we created earlier. The link you need is here, underneath the title. So you copy that and then head to the pages that you created and look for any call to action sections. So then you just edit the widget, paste the link in here, then save and update. Then you're done. It's all set up and ready to go. Let's head back to WordPress and onto the last step where I want to show you four of our favorite plugins that we use ourselves that enhance the capabilities and adds even more functionality to your incredible website. These are easy to use and understand and are extremely beneficial to your online presence and the functionality of your website. Let's get going with plugin number one. Search engines consider site speed to be an important factor in search rankings. This is why you should try your best to improve site load speed to an optimal level. You can do this by making sure your images are optimized for use on the web, Videos are uploaded to an online platform like YouTube, but to optimize your whole website quickly and easily, we have noticed that caching our website helped us improve site speed as well as balancing huge spikes in traffic. This is what WP Supercache will help you do. It makes it much faster to load your website pages, which search engines love. So let's install it now. Go to plugins and add new and then search for WP Supercache. Now click on Install, and then Activate. You'll now see a message at the top saying the plugin is disabled. Please go to the Plugin Admin page to enable caching. You now need to just click this link and you'll be taken to this page. And all you do is turn caching on. Then update the status, and then test the plugin. And that's all good, so we're good to go. WP Supercache is now working for you in the background, making sure your website is working at its optimal speed, and it's as simple as that. Let's now install the next plugin. Share is one of those plugins you have to be using as it's so powerful in growing your online presence and ultimately your business. It enables your visitors to instantly share your website, your blog posts, or any of your content to their social media, friends and family. So then they might share it and they might share it and so on. It's amazing and it's free, so you should definitely be using it. So again, head to plugins and add new and search for Sumo Me. Sumo Me is one big plugin that has a suite of plugins that you install. 
Some are free and some are paid for, but it is one of WordPress's most powerful plugins. So let's install it. And then activate. And now you should get a message here saying to set up Sumo Me. So click that. Now you just enter an email and a password to create your free account. And you're done. You're now in and you should see this screen. And don't worry, it might look a little confusing. But all you need to look for is social on the left here and find share. And now click on activate. It'll ask you if you want to connect it to Facebook. So if you do, go ahead, but I won't for now. And then it'll show you some Sumo Me Pro plans. And eventually you might want to do this. But for now, the free version is great and works fine. Up here, you've got some options. So in settings, you get to choose which social platforms you want to show up in share. And you can move these around. You can add them in and you can remove any that you don't want. For now, just save. And next to settings is layout, which lets you choose where you want share to be placed on your website, as well as on mobile. And all you do is just click the location if you wanted to move this around. Share is now ready and active, so let's check it out. Click the cross to come out of share and then view your website. There it is, ready to share your beautiful website. Great work, you're doing so well. Let's jump into the next plugin. So now search for Yoast SEO. This amazing plugin helps your content to be found online. It tells search engines what your content is about so they can rank it higher in search results. Search engine optimization is incredibly important for bloggers, marketers, or anyone who's trying to grow online. And by using this little plugin, you're making your content more visible to people using keywords associated with your brand, products, services, based on what people search for on search engines like Google. So now click on install and then activate. Now you'll have a new tool in your toolbar here called SEO. Go to that and click on dashboard. Now go to general and click on open the configuration wizard. This will take you through setting up Yoast SEO on your website. So let's do this quickly now. Click on configure Yoast SEO. So now it will go through asking you just a few questions. So the first one is, is the site live? Yes, it is. So click that. And now click on next. What is your site type? I'll select a blog for this one and click on next. Is your website for a company or an individual person? I'll leave this as company and write websites made easy underneath. You can also upload an image if you want to here and then click next. Here you can paste your social media URLs if you want to. I'll leave this for now and click next. Post type visibility can be left as it is, so just click on next. Do you have multiple authors for your website? Click yes or no and then next. And for this bit, you are connecting your Google account to Yoast SEO to gain an authorization code. So all you do is click on get Google authorization code Sign in with your Google account and you want to copy the code that Google gives you and then paste it in here and you're done. Leave this as it is and you can sign up for their newsletter if you'd like, then click on next and you're done. So there you go, you've got Yoast SEO up and running and there's loads more you can do with this from taking a glimpse at how your pages or posts would look in search results, right from the WordPress editor, and so much more. I don't have time to go more in depth in this video, but we do have an awesome video covering it all on our blog, so be sure to check that out. Making sure your SEO is working for you will make all the difference to your business. And by the way, if you want to have a shop on your website sometime, then this is even more important. And this theme does that incredibly well in their pro version. Just look at this. It's a beautiful looking store that you can set up super quick to start selling merchandise. We'll be creating a video taking you through how to do this very soon, so be sure to look out for that. All right, we're on the last plugin, and this one is one of the best that you can use with your WordPress website. 
It's a little more in depth, so I can't show you how to set up in this video, but I wanted you to know about it and the possibilities to enhance your website using another one of Sumomi's amazing plugins. This one is called List Builder, and it uses a very clever little pop-up window that knows exactly when someone is about to leave your website. And at that point, it triggers the pop-up, which has an offer that they just can't refuse because it's something of so much value in return for their email address. This is just like our call to action that we set up earlier, and it is a game changer when used effectively like this. So the people that used to visit your website, leave, and generally might not come back, are now coming back all the time because now you have their email address and you can keep in constant communication with them. And like I said before, you can update them on your new products or services and get them to come back on your site over and over. And you can also fully customize List Builder and the pop-up to fit with your brand. If you haven't been collecting emails yet, this is the best way to get started. As I said, there's no time in this video, but we've already got an amazing video all about it. So go check that out on our blog. And that's it, you finished your website. How incredible does it look? You should be super proud of yourself and what you've accomplished. It's looking absolutely beautiful and your visitors are going to love looking around and getting to know your brand. Subscribe, download and buy your products. It's going to be a great adventure. I'm excited for you. I hope you've enjoyed watching and if you did, please quickly give this video a like and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for lots more videos just like this. Also, let us know how you get on by leaving a comment and be sure to check out the Websites Made Easy Facebook page to keep up to date with new videos which come out all the time. Thank you and see you in the next video.